If you are an audio enthusiast, you may want to enjoy the classic sound of analog mediums. The analog gears in your system are like your pets. The more care you give, the more reward you get. In order to watch their health condition, you need an in-house toolkit to check their performances against the specs on a regular basis. In the last century, such a lightweight and versatile toolkit had been long missing until the introduction of the Nakamichi T100 audio analyzer, which was a legendary piece of affordable test gear that smartly packed the minimum setup of an audio lab into a compact box and making it as simple as a multimeter to use. Today, in digital age, we have a rich supply of software audio analyzers. But we are often overwhelmed by their dazzling features and diverse usabilities. The unique simplicity and convenience of the Nakamichi T100 analyzer are still being remembered and favored after decades. Unfortunately, this device is no longer in production. You have to look for a used unit which is rather scarce, pricey and may need a thorough service to bring it back to a trustful condition. However, we found that all the original functions can be re-implemented by software algorithms today, and the unique ergonomics can also be reproduced by modern graphic user interface. Based on such a skeuomorphic thought, a new software application has been developed to virtually simulate the T100 audio analyzer on a general-purpose computer. The software application is capable of simulating almost all the functions of the real device except measuring high voltage which is limited by the sound card itself. In addition, the simulator can perform more advanced tasks that the real device could not do, such as spectrum analysis, oscilloscope, and frequency response scanning. In order to allow the software application working properly, the computer must have audio input and audio output ports, either built-in or external via USB. They will be cross-connected to the corresponding output and input ports on the audio device being tested. After finishing the physical connection, a simple calibration work needs to be done prior to do any measurements. For example, to inspect a cassette deck, load a blank tape and start recording. Turn the recording level knob to the middle position. Turn the oscillator dialer of the T100 application to the position of 400 Hz. Adjust the computer's sound output volume, so that the meter on the cassette deck is pointing to the 0 dB mark. Then adjust the sound input volume of the computer, so that the meter on the T100 is also pointing to the 0 dB mark. Now the system has been calibrated and ready for doing the measurements. In the following demo, a 3-head deck will be measured as an example but the same can be achieved for two head decks with record rewind playback cycles. The first measurement is the tape speed. Load the speed test tape to the cassette deck and press play button start playing. Turn the function dialer on the T100 application to the speed position. Wait for a few seconds and you can read the speed result. If necessary, Click here to change the reference frequency between 3000 Hz or 3150 Hz. Because the speed test tape is also for wow and flutter test, you can read the wow and flutter result simultaneously. If necessary, use this switch to change the meter sensitivity. By default, result is in DIN weighted quasi peak scale. By clicking here, you can change the scale to DIN weighted WRMS. The next measurement is the total harmonic distortion. Since this measurement is mainly for recording, load a blank tape to the cassette deck and start recording. On the application UI, turn the function dialer to TH dist, L, position. Wait for a few seconds, you can read the distortion in the left channel. Then turn the function dialer one step further and wait for a few seconds, you can read the distortion in the right channel. If necessary, Click here to switch the test signal frequency between 400 Hz and 1000 Hz. The next measurement is the signal to noise ratio. Keep the deck in recording mode. On the application UI, turn the function dialer to the noise A minus 40 dB position. Wait for a few seconds. You can read a dB number from the meter. The result signal to noise ratio equals this number minus 40. For example, if you read a number minus 15, minus by 40, 
you got 55 dB as the final signal to noise ratio. You can turn on any noise reduction system on the cassette deck, such as Dolby or DBX, to measure the signal to noise ratio with that noise reduction system. All the results are weighted in the IHFA standard. The next measurement is the overall frequency response by self recording and self playing back. Keep the deck in recording mode. To do this measurement, you can switch the application to the scope mode, which is not available on the real T100 hardware device. Click on the FR pink button and wait for a few seconds. The curves on the display shows the frequency response in left and right channels respectively. The result is measured by using pink noise, which is under a similar condition to our day-to-day -day listening case. But if you want the result being measured under the standard specification condition, you need to click on the FR white button and then drag the slider at the bottom to set the output level to minus 20 dB. The curves produced under this condition are more suitable for being compared against the specifications. The pink and white are the two quick methods to measure the overall frequency response, but the results are relatively rough. If you prefer a more precise result, you can click on the FR sweep button to start a finer but slower measurement. This method will measure the frequency responses by going through a series of individual frequencies from low end to high end. Meanwhile, there will be a unique ID recorded before each frequency test signal, so to allow the entire measurement being conducted in a truly asynchronous manner. Which means, if you are testing a three-head deck, you don't need to worry about the latency between the recording head and playback head. If you are testing a two-head deck, you can record first, and then rewind and playback without needing to align the signal start point. The program can automatically recognize and locate each test point based on its embedded ID, and draw the entire curve without alignment error. So, we've just finished the basic measurements. But this application is not only for device inspection, but also for audio tuning. For example, some cassette decks come with a special control called Bias Fine. Many users are wondering how to properly use it. Let's see how this application can assist to achieve an optimal result. First, load the tape to be recorded to the deck and start test recording. Switch the application to the scope mode and select the FR pink measurement. Watch the curves on the computer's screen. Pay more attention to the right end of the curves. Meanwhile, slowly turn the bias fine knob on the cassette deck. Find a spot that makes the curves as flat as possible. This is an iterative and progressive work that takes a little time. Then switch the application back to the basic mode. Turn the function dialer to TH dist position. Check if the distortion readings from left and right channels are less than 1%. If yes, the job is done with ideal result. But if not, it indicates that the absolute ideal result is not achievable. Nothing really unusual, you just need to go back and forth to make a good balance between frequency response and distortion. This work may not be as straightforward for a two head cassette deck. But it is an objective method which helps to avoid the common mistakes often made by subjective guesswork. The application can also be used in a service project. For example, when adjusting the azimuth of a tape head, the Lissajou pattern is a powerful tool to visualize the phase misalignment. But sometimes with a standard oscilloscope, you may hardly achieve a perfect 45 degree line because the tiny vibration in the tape movement makes the Lissajou pattern unstable or even flipping between clockwise and counterclockwise, which the graph itself doesn't tell. In this application, an additional slow motion ellipse is introduced, which effectively filters out the unwanted wobbling and flipping, so that you don't have to estimate but actually see where the average pattern is. You just need to adjust the azimuth to get the slow motion ellipse as closer towards a 45 degree line. So, we don't want to make this demo too long like a tutorial. Hope you've already got a basic idea from it. As you can see, 
This is a software that strives for reproducing a very era specific user experience. If such a user experience had ever been praised by the serious recordists, audio engineers, service technicians, and even expert hobbyists, then it d e s e r v e a second life today with the resurgence of analog audio sources. This software is our dedicated effort to make it actually happening. It decouples the unique user experience from the obsolete hardware implementations and refactor it with the modern digital technologies. If you are familiar with the classic T100 audio analyzer, you know what it means today. But if you aren't, nothing has been really missed. Just being aware that this application is a lightweight, all inclusive, and cost efficient audio analyzer. It is not meant to substitute any laboratory instruments, regardless of hardware or software. This is not a matter of quality but design intention. Unlike a science research tool, this application is dedicated to perform a set of pre defined conventional audio measurements in one go with minimum overheads. It starts each measurement immediately, without requiring or allowing complex configurations. Which features for conducting iterative and progressive tests quickly on the desktop, but not suitable for science research project. It is specially optimized for inspecting analog audio devices, including magnetic tape players and recorders. However, despite of its analog style control panel, it is a digital tool in essence, which is driven by DSP algorithms instead of analog circuits. Hence, it may not necessarily yield strict identical readings. Typical tolerances across different types of test instruments would be expected. The software application is more of a function simulator rather than a cosmetic simulator. It may not offer you a pride ownership of the legendary Nakamichi gear, but it can save you maintenance effort, space, and cost, which were formerly required for having the equivalent functionalities. The software application is available on the online app store of Apple and Microsoft. It requires Mac OS X or Microsoft Windows 10, and a computer with audio input and output ports. Should you need more information, please visit the website at the provided URL. Thank you very much for watching.